When it comes to all the questions about trademarking as a real attorney, I'm always just having conversations and consults. And so today yeah. we're going to kind of go through this as if Orco, he's going to be registering his trademark, that Orco, in the realm of being a music producer. And so he's going to go through, ask the questions which you guys would have. And we're going to try it this way. And I think you're going to find this super helpful. So make sure you subscribe and keep on watching. So hit me. Yeah, no, I mean, I'll just take you through it like, you know, just when I was first kind of learning about it and because you got me through the process of doing it. So, you know, um, basically, why would I even need a trademark? Like, you know, is it how absolutely necessary is it? I've been in music for I've been making beats and doing music for years and I've, I've never needed a trademark before. Why? Why do I need it now? As, as someone who's actively using social media, this is one that comes up the least. But for me, it's the thing I'm most excited about being when you have your trademark, a piece of paper from the government that says you own your name, it actually allows you to go on social media and to shut people down like within an hour. So meaning if you find there are infringers on social media that have set pages who are using your name, you can go and get their profiles deleted very quickly but you have to have the registration to do that now if you're like one day you wake up you're like oh i gotta get it there's an infringer it actually takes about a year wow. so you you waiting to do this is not a good idea you want to do it asap now there are other benefits besides that that's just the one that i get the most excited about because i like ruining people's days but when it comes to how this can really benefit you you get to sue someone if you don't have the registration if someone violates your trademark, you can't sue them until you get it. Again, we're waiting a year. And you can also get your attorney's fees reimbursed. So if you have to come hire me, I'm not cheap, honey. You want to make sure you get the other side to pay to reimburse your attorney's fees. So all that, you know, <laughs> combined, that's why you want to get your trademark. Okay, so uh, what, how much, how much does getting a trademark cost? Like, generally like is it a super expensive thing because I, I i i'm sure it's like a whole process do i am i paying a, an attorney and, and they're all uh all inclusive is this you know do i do it myself and i have to just go to a website and just pay like a quick fee yeah look if you wanted to do it yourself you can definitely try and you just go to uspto and you can find videos you know online and tutorials and things like that so you can at the the base government filing fees are either 250 or 350 it depends on what you're filing for okay. and so again you have to have a little knowledge of like how that works and why you're paying a different fee but at the most it's 350 and that's per class so when we do a class for you if you're a music producer in the class of entertainment that would be one so you basically count how many things like so if you're selling clothes that's different so now you have two so you go two times 350 seven hundred dollars okay, so, so I'd have to, you'd have to get it for each individual different thing that you're doing with the name so if i was that orco and i'm want to get it trademarked for music and then but then let's say i wanted to sell that orco shirts i'd have to get a separate trademark for that orco shirts that's right but that's let's also started, why and then a, a cologne brand like that it wouldn't just be products in general it would be like would like shirts be different from like hats or would that all be the same yeah so that would be think of categories so if you have a clothing category, it's all the things that you're selling in the clothing category. That's one. So t-shirts and hoodies and socks, beanies. That's one. If you're selling perfume, that's a whole different category. But it could okay. be all kinds of perfumes. So so anyway, for a lot of people, we usually just start with one. So if you're a music producer, it would just be you as right. an entertainer or service provider. If you are you know, a musician, you might be selling, you are selling music. Um, so that's kind of how it works. So let's pretend you're just doing one category one classification so your fee at the most is 350. now if you hire a law firm a lot of law firms they'll be around maybe 700 bucks maybe 800 bucks wow. so that's why like for me i always tell um you know clients i go i can do what's called a knockout search or you can do it for yourself but that's okay. always the first step okay before you spend a year of your life trying to get a trademark before you spend 1200 dollars trying yeah. to get a trademark do a search and this is how it goes there's kind of two steps one search online search on google search on social media search on music platforms anywhere that's relevant to what you're doing take a look and see if anyone has a name it doesn't have to be exact is it close to yours is it going to be right. confusing like 
So we're, we're figuring out, is there anyone else out there? Now, just because they're out there doesn't mean they have, you know, a priority over you. Maybe you have the rights. Okay. Again, why it's good to have an attorney to talk to. But the other piece that's often missed is that you actually go to USPTO.gov. And that's where you can search for anything that's registered. We care okay. a lot. Is there an ORCO or that ORCO already registered on USPTO? And if not, that's a pretty good sign. But again, just when doing that search, you have to be very thorough. So again, if you can hire an attorney, it's a lot cheaper just to do that knockout search. But that's what you do is step one. Don't just dive in and spend a lot of money. And So what happens if I've been using my name for like 10 years? But, you know, with streaming and stuff, I'm noticing that there are, you know, two other, three other producers using the same name or artists or a band or just something like that. You know, uh, I'm sure like if, you know, if I was a DJ and I had DJ in front of my name, I think it would be kind of tough to to find something original sometimes. So when you're doing what, what do you do then? Like, do I have to change my name like if somebody has it registered like am, am i done and what if it, they're registered like in i don't know new zealand or something but they're not even here or what if they don't even use the name anymore can i use it and trademark it yeah so um he wouldn't find registrations for other countries through uspto because remember we're only trying to protect if you're in the united states we're okay. protecting your name in all of the united states that's the benefit of a federal trademark registration. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, if you do find someone, let's say on your internet search and you find that Orco and they're like, Oh wait, that Orco is in Canada or that Orco is in New Zealand. Yeah. Then that actually probably is a good sign because they're not in the United States because all we care about is who else is in the United States. Now, if you do find through USPTO, there's in that Orco <clears throat> registration, the next thing you're looking at is, well, what is it for? Is it that Orca the soda, mm. right? So if it's that Orca the soda, that's not the same thing as what you're doing as a music producer, as you know, if you're selling merchandise. So you actually can have the exact same trademark as someone else if it's in a different category. Mm. So you know, if you're, you're like Pandora, Pandora the streaming service versus the Pandora the jewelry, like those can actually coexist. And then to be clear, just, you know, I mean, it, it, trademarks are completely different from copywriting. So like if you have, if you're, you know, you're copywriting music and your name is in the title of, you know, whatever it is, like that's not a trademark. Yeah. So um, copyright is to copyright the actual creative work and to protect it. It's the music. It's, you know, if you made an application, the tech behind it, um, and then the trademark is for the actual name and for the brand. And then if I find somebody that is just, you know, after, so you're saying it takes like, it could take like a year to, 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 to actually get it all approved. And then, and then what, like I get like a fun little email or certificate and then, and then what, like if somebody pops up in three years or four years from now and they use it, like then what, I just talk to an attorney and, and go, Hey, they're using this. Or is there like. Do I go to the trademark office and go, hey, do I have to like stand in the line or something? <laughs> yeah, so the do? trade uh, good questions. The trademark office, um, they're not gonna do anything other than by registering, they actually will stop people. So if there's another that Orco that tries registering in your class, even if he's like, you know, it's not a music producer, but it's like an, an influencer, a social media influencer, they would actually stop that person because it's actually in the same class that you would be in. So that's actually the really nice thing of being registered. So that's the one thing the trademark office does do. They don't deal with like your personal infringement stuff. So yes, you would contact an attorney to get help in some instances. But like I'm telling you, if you have that piece of paper, which is what it, what it you know, it's a certificate. If you have that piece of paper, when you have an infringement, let's say if it's online, you can like, you know, search on Google, Facebook, trademark takedown. And it's pretty intuitive and you can end up doing it yourself. And so you don't have to pay an attorney because you already did all the hard stuff. So there's lots of different ways, but the point just being that you can now actually enforce your trademark. And what happens is that after you get the trademark, between years five and six, you do have to renew. And then you have to renew again between nine and 10. And it's just basically you like tell the trademark office, hey, I'm still using it, I'm still doing my thing. Um, and just to make sure that you you know keep your exclusive rights, but that's kind of how it works.
okay so let's say we we go through the process um i found i didn't find anything but then they they reject my they say no because i mean it's a process you have to get accepted and approved for your you know your trademarks i would assume so uh you know what 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 happens if you get it you know no or what hap what should you do if you find somebody is using it i guess at that point you should just change your your name and then like right like if you yeah if maybe not maybe not so the way it works is actually whoever uses the name first wins it's a priority thing so some people they're like super scared they're like oh, i'm gonna be that orco the super producer uh you know content creator so i don't want anyone to know about it yet because i'm not ready i don't have my website i don't have my social media that's actually not how it works you don't want to wait because there might be that orco that starts using it a few months before you and so if a dispute comes up you have to prove it so you know what can happen is that even if you do get the registration or like you're doing a search you're like oh my gosh there's that orco and you see that even though they got the registration they still have been using it less time than you you can actually file to get their stuff canceled so it's more about just being really like diligent how you know who's using it where are they located how long have they been using it and then when you're not sure talk to a professional like a trademark attorney all right very cool well i mean it, yeah i mean it, it's all it's a it sounds like a very intimidating process and you know i was very lucky that i had you because i have my name is trademarked and See, you know, we we in fact did acquire we, the that orco trademark <laughs> I, I i am i have i've been official now um and and it's been it's been cool you know what i mean it just to even just to have even just that that feeling of professionalism and you know just knowing that i'm taking my music career kind of seriously for stuff and you know i, I want to earn money and i don't want any problems down the line you know just for for any reason because i mean there's there's so many artists out there that have the same names as other artists and like on spotify like it's there's so many like generic names that just people are and i don't even know what their situation is but it's a lot of work to build up all your goodwill for your fans and just right. building up your numbers and your and your different streaming services or your social medias and so to kind of have that peace of mind that you're the legit one and you know when you're trying to get your check marks and when you're trying to get you know all of those things you know all this stuff plays into it so yeah all right so last last two quick things um so in regards to ashley's question should i have my logo ready to go prior to trademarking and this is a great question yeah you can trademark your logo the picture the image and not or and you trademark just the text and and because this is expensive i always tell people just start with the text version yeah, because sure. your name of you know being an artist or the band is so important so start with just the name the logo will change like over right. the next five years ten years like you know what i'm saying so so get it if you want it but really the the name is that important and then last um shred gravity had just said there's dozens of other bands yeah so that's why we do the knockout search because yeah. as you're like deciding do you even want to have the fight if there's so many other people using your name like do you want to go down that road Maybe i say don't new I name. Say don't do it i say don't even do it and i think if i say even if you let's say you've been a band for like a year and you guys picked a cool name and then there's like you know two or three other people just change your name like it's it, people kind of understand as you're kind of growing with your thing just keep your fans that are there in the loop and stuff like that making changes to your from your distributor to change some of the things that you need to change is not really that big of a deal or you know changing a couple things on your youtube things it, it, when as you as you kind of grow like i was even in a band that we started off as one name and then we made something that we thought was way more kind of commercial sounding we changed it um and so it, I, I would recommend definitely making sure that your name is not just used by somebody else. Just come up with something original, like be creative. It's half the fun. All right. So there you go. There is your trademark consultation. If you guys need further help, feel free to reach out to my law office. I'll link it down below. Good luck.